Hey guys, it's Real Rabbit Raccoon. Today I have a very special video for you guys. It is my 200 day world tour. Now, before we jump straight into the video, I just want to specify one thing. I am playing in custom, which means that certain presets are not the default ones. Among these presets are the day length. Normally people are playing with the default day length, which is about 30-ish minute per day, given that you don't skip the night, of course. Whereas I'm playing in long, which is, uh, I believe, 95-ish minutes per day, which is about three times as long. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about 200 days. Really briefly, I just want to say that I am using log hack in this world, which means that I have unlimited logs. If you don't know, log hack is a console command and you can get console commands by typing cheat stick on your keyboard then pressing F1 and this opens up to you a numerous amount of console commands which are essentially cheats and among these console commands there is one that's called log hack which is the one I'm using to uh, place unlimited amount of logs. I don't have to chop any trees. Now, a fair question is to ask, well, if you're using this console commands, are you using other console commands? Are you essentially playing in creative, in god mode? And to this, I just want to say, well, personally, I don't think I am abusing the console commands. The only one that I'm using is really uh, the, the log hack one. I don't give myself items, so to me it's still a survival game and it's still enjoyable to me. I don't know if you guys mind it, but I figured that it was important to mention it. So this place, this place is really the heart of this world. This log cabin is probably the place that I visit the most because it, it's built over a bunker hatch, as you can see, and I can access it and I can easily go up so that's really really cool it's probably it's my second base this log cabin and it's really the first time that I got into building in this game and uh, I even built a fireplace which a lot of you guys liked and it's done with a grid offset now there's a second floor to this I'm, I'm really happy with how the chimney turned out because even on this, the, the second floor, it, it looks good. Let's move to the gazebo. Now, this was inspired from Night Before Dawn because he did a video, he did a two-part video on how to do an octagonal foundation and how to then place a roof on that octagonal foundation. And that's actually what inspired me to do this gazebo course I gave it a little bit of my style added some planters I think it looks really great there's some skull here some lights uh, with light bulbs although I do not like them very much I might remove them but yeah Kelvin really likes this place and the fact there's a ramp here makes it really easy for him to access it and I really like this spirally pattern of the floor up next is this bone harvester that I invented. I'm actually going to put a video of it in action so you see how it works. It's really simple. Uh, you throw a body on a campfire and if you don't know, campfires don't have a solid hitbox so you can just go through them. And once a body touches a campfire, it burns until it turns into bones. So it makes a really cool bone harvester because all the bones drop here and then you can just spam E and collect them without worrying about clicking on the campfire accidentally. Now you cannot put some firewood in it, you can't, because firewood does have a solid hit box so if you throw a body it's gonna, it's, uh, it's not gonna go through. And you gotta remind yourself to always put a second stick otherwise well it's gonna just despawn but if it does despawn, luckily we have this 
which is a perpendicular roofing technique which allows you to uh, place uh, another campfire really quickly. When I'm done, I just place it here so that when I throw the body the next time, I don't fall in the hole with the body and I don't burn myself. So that's the bone harvester. Okay, so I'm not going to go over everything, but there are some lampposts here and there's a tutorial on my channel on how to do them. But I think they look really good and they, they add to the scenery. Now over there, that's uh, probably one of the last thing that I built. It's a church. And next to it, there's a cage for sacrifices. It's built right outside of the ring of dead cultists. I think it, it really adds to the decor. Now, let me show you the inside really quickly. We got shelves here, and if you're asking why we got so many skin pouches, that's because we tax our followers a lot when they come here. Now, that's the nave, or the nav, I don't know how you pronounce it. You know, the main room in the church. And there's this cross, which I absolutely love, and I did it with a floating log glitch. And you can look at it from the side, there's actually some torches, which allows it to be lit up. So, I really like this stage, it really feels cool. It makes it tempting to give a speech here to a lot of people. And here there's the, the staff room for, I guess, maybe the pastor or the priest. Uh, before he gives a speech, he, he practices here and he talks with the, the other staff members. Or, you know, he gets ready here. And here there's a nice little uh, back door which I suppose is, it's probably the, again, a door only used by the, the, the staff. And this is what it looks like from the side. There's some skull lanterns, which unfortunately disappear from random distance when we get away from them. Up next is this huge tower. Um, there's actually some zip lines, so we can climb it up really, really quickly. But I'm actually gonna take the stairs this time so you can see it it's kind of a cliff base this part of the world and uh, the reason why I put some stairs here is because sometimes you want to just take the glider with you and you can't like climb with a rope and a glider at the same time so you could jump here with your glider or you could go higher and jump here now once we climb up the tower, this is what it looks like. Again, there's another uh, area where you can jump with your glider. Uh, there's a zip line here. This zip line is mostly used to uh, refill my water flask. And here, there's a zip line that I almost took earlier that would have gotten me here instantly but I didn't take it and here there's a bridge and there's a floating platform that looks to be attached on the tree but it's really floating the bridge aren't holding it up it's really just floating oh and up here there's the bridge I love this bridge it's probably the first ever high bridge built in Sons of the Forest that doesn't involve like a rope bridge because let's be honest that doesn't really count so we got two places we can go here we can either take the bridge which Virginia is taking at the moment or we can take those zip lines over there now I really want to take the bridge but I'm gonna have to go here first so we got a zip line that's uh, going up to the very highest point of the world and I'm actually going to take it at the end, but not now. And we got a zip line here that's really useful. It gets us to uh, a couple of graves. So if we ever need rope, we can go here. And if we go up here, we can get really quickly a glider. 
Now, the, the reason why I built this is because colliders actually despawn uh, at the moment that I'm recording this. So you kind of have to find like a location where they naturally spawn so you can always have one available because if you bring it over at your base sometimes it's just gonna disappear and I don't really know why just so you can see uh, the glider is over there you can see it all right now we can take the bridge so this bridge is super cool I decided to put zip lines here it looks like some extra support and that's something that you really see with those high, uh, with those high bridge, those tall bridge. I don't know how you call it, tall bridge, high bridge. So yeah, I really like how it, it turned out, and it took a while to take out all the scaffolding. Now we can take a zip line here, which leads us to one of my favorite builds, which is probably the most luxurious swimming pool that you can have in Sons of the Forest. So look at this. So there's a bed which is really useful because you can save, but you can also jump on it and it gets you just high enough so you can take the zip line back to the tall bridge. Now here we have an octagonal swimming pool and some light bulbs. Now currently the light bulbs aren't connected, but gosh, that would be cool. A luminous swimming pool. Octagonal. An octagonal luminous swimming pool and we got a bench here we can sit uh, there's a bunch of plants a bit over there but you know they always get destroyed I wish I wish it wouldn't get destroyed when you have structure damage turned off but they do so this is what it looks like from the outside it's pretty simple looking uh, there's some solid panels and there's no windows because I, I want this to be like an oasis. You can just like lock the door on both sides and then you're safe. Here there's another uh, bone harvester that I decided to place. It's a different design. Again, it's made by me. Um, uh, there's a bunch of bone harvester a little bit over the place in this wall because, well, they're so useful. And with this design, you have to come out the back to collect the bones. But, but yeah, I really like it. I don't know if I like this design more or the other one that I showed you previously. And now here we have the windmill. Now, personally, I'm not a big fan of it. That's the last thing I created. I'm not a big fan of it. I don't know how you find it. Um, it was definitely an ambitious build. I don't think anybody thought of doing this or actually went on and did it because, well, let's be honest, it was a bad idea trying to make the, <laughs> the wind blade, but um, it turned out okay, you know. It's, if, if there's a new floating log technique, maybe I can repair the wind blade, but at the moment it's not the best looking. Now, I don't know why these ropes are here, but I'm just going to take him out really quickly. And this lock doesn't have, doesn't belong here. So this is what it looks like from the inside. You can simply climb it up. And then here there's a little place where you can look. And yeah, here's the, the wind blade. Look, I, I, I tried my best, alright? I tried my best. And that's what matters. And you can go up here. And there's a secret room. I don't know why you would want to be here. There's no reason to be here. But, you know what? Why not? Why not? It's crazy to me because that's 200 days. This is so many hours. Hundreds of hours of play. I'm just showcasing this world to you, and it's only a few minutes, a couple of minutes. Now, if you don't know, you can actually make infinite zip lines. If there are no obstacles in the way, you can make an infinite zip line by editing it in your game files, which is what I did here. And this zip line over here leads us to a tower. 
Now this tower is the first thing that I built when the glider came in this game. Uh, it's a tower which you can access the top with the by taking stairs. So you can take the glider too. It's built over the bunker hatch that contains the revolver. So right here again it's over a bunker hatch. What the hell is going on? I've never seen this. Huh, interesting. Anyway. Now we can take this zipline and it actually leads us to my first phase in Sons of the Forest. It's really, really bad, but it's my first phase so it definitely has an emotional value and that's why I'm showcasing it to you. There you go, now we can see it. Uh, we can take the zipline to go to the top. There's also like a GPS tracker that I placed on the tower so we can see it on the map. Uh, there's a zipline, there's three ziplines on the top. There's the one I'm taking, taking. There's this one, which leads us to a river that doesn't freeze and has a lot of fish, which is really useful. It was really useful during my first uh, winter to get a lot of fish and just to put them on those drying racks The third zipline is this one and it leads us to six graves which were really useful to get some rope and There's actually a pond here, which I guess we can drink from here too, but it freezes over the winter now as you can see uh, I didn't use defensive wall for this base because, well, at the time of making it, the defensive wall weren't working. Cannibals would just clip through. So I actually had to do uh, the horizontal log stacking method. Oh, and we can also access the, the, the huge tower here by going here. Then there's a rope. And another rope, which is gonna be useful. And yeah, that's that's about it for my first base. And so this already concludes my 200 day world tour in Sons of the Forest. I hope you liked it. If you did, please leave a like on this video, share it, and subscribe, please. Uh, I started out the channel only two weeks ago, so anything that you can do to support me is always much appreciated. I'll see you guys later. Ciao, ciao. Bye-bye.